and focus on science, technology, and innovations. Our chief guests are distinguished ladies and gentlemen. As you may be aware, KIU is a comprehensive university that has consistently and significantly achieved great strides in championing science and technology in the delivery of quality higher education. Being fully aware of the trends in science, uh, technology and innovations, and in line with the agenda of the government of Uganda and regional partners, KIU remains at the forefront for, of the search for all interventions that will contribute significantly to national development. Our chief guest, you are key witness to the next statement I'm about to make. At KIU, we commend the great consistency and efforts of your ministry that has over the past two years consistently facilitated the National Science Week in Uganda. And as you are aware, our Honorable Minister, KIU participated in the 2023 ed edition, which ran uh, recently between 6th to 11th November, under the theme, Uganda to Simbu Day, our science-led journey toward socioeconomic transformation. Honorable Minister at KIU, to our Da, but we shall still to Jaku Simbula way in journey towards science and technology. During that exhibition, Honorable Mr. Our Chancellor and distinguished guest, KIU, showcased 70 different innovative products and solutions deployed by our students and staff in the schools of pharmacy, mathematics and computing, engineering and applied sciences, Faculty of Science and Technology, and the Center of Excellence in Entrepreneurship and Innovation. The products and solutions comprised, among others, a mouthwash spray, skin cold cream, menostop soy extract, wireless controlled robotic arm, a self-controlled IP camera system, wireless intercom system, car parking assisted tool, firefighting robot, an automatic solar panel cleaning system, and an electric water pump system. Don't those innovations deserve a big hand of clap? As if that is not enough, we were also able to demonstrate an RFID-based occupants monitoring system, Bluetooth controlled smart car, smart car accident avoidance technology, sensor-based cloud integrated smart bin, virtual reality-based platform for profiling tourist sites, machine learning-based breast cancer, the cancer diagnostic system, and an offline screen sharing app for teaching and learning space utilization. Most of these innovations, uh, Honorable Minister, have potential for further development in two viable commercial businesses, and at KIU, we are preparing some of them uh, to be filed for patents, and each of these innovations potentially is an actual go into business, but we have also undertaken to do publications for each of the solutions that we innovate. Our target as the university is to develop on an annual basis a minimum of 15 solutions and innovations as we contribute to national agenda of prioritizing science, technology, and innovations. We congratulate our staff from the different schools, faculties, and colleges, and the Center of Excellence in Entrepreneurship and Innovation for championing these efforts. With their motivational slogan, the slogan here, Honorable Minister, is that all domains of knowledge matter. It doesn't matter whether you did law or mathematics or social sciences or international relations, let alone business. We can bring you together. All of you have potential to participate in our innovation drive. The university will therefore be approaching you, Honorable Minister, so that government provides funding to further develop these initiatives. I'm pleased to announce here today our graduates, our parents and guardians and sponsors that we are now using a multi-pronged approach to increase our portfolio on grants and funding, partnerships and collaborations. We are working with both staff and students, supported by external experts from collaborating institutions to capacitate and unpack 
the research and innovation potentials. So far, these efforts have started yielding tangible results. I have exciting news of a recent grant proposal entitled Implementation of Research or Real-Life Assessment of Existing Interventions in Women and Child Children Health to be funded by the European Commission under the Directorate General for Research and Innovation that has just one worth 4 million euros uh, to be sent to six universities uh, in addition to KIU. The partners include University of Bergen in Norway, KIU in Tanzania, Makere University Lang Institute, University Catholic de Bokavu, and the National Institute for Medical Research in Tanzania. Four million euros coming to the university and other universities to be able to address the key issue of maternal and child health. We have also, also first submitted more than 300 project proposals for funding and expect that we shall have more wins. As part of the preparation to deal with success in the projects, ladies and gentlemen, sometimes success comes with challenges. So if we begin winning and we have now won 4 million euros and win another 5 million US dollars, another 3 million US dollars, and another 500 ETC, the challenge will be how to deal with that success. In order to circumvent that problem, as part of our preparations, we are undertaking great strides to build our internal capacity through cluster formation along areas of specialization, but with a multidisciplinary approach. I want to thank Chairman Board of Trustees. Mr. Chairman, sir, you are our catalyst. You are the ne necessary enzyme in this process. As usual, you always move faster than all of us, but later bring us on board. On behalf of my entire team of staff, we assure the Board of Trustees and the University Council that we, we are more than ready to achieve more with the kind of support we are getting. May I request recognition of our Chair and Board of Trustees. Our chief guests allow me now to thank the Appointments and Promotions Committee of the University Council of KIU that recently approved the promotion of 52 staff and many more who are in the pipeline. At least out of the 52, six of our colleagues now have actually been promoted to the rank of associate professor, seven to senior lecturer, another seven to lecturer, 32 to assistant lecturer. At formation, I would like to recognize Associate Professor Amade Robert Amana from law, Associate Professor Tajuddin Sai, public law or school of law, Associate Professor Sophia Sol Tanodra Gaite, education administration, Associate Professor Robert Balaga Desali, computer science and engineering, Associate Professor Okwango Kelechi John, Electronics and Telecommunications Engineering, and Associate Professor Stephen Ndobusi Namchi, Mechanical Engineering. My academic colleagues can we recognize the achievement. If these professors are here, they can stand up for recognition. Thank you. Our chief guest, let me also add to the support we get from international staff. Each time we recruit new staff internationally and also from Uganda, I wish to warmly welcome all our new staff, both Ugandan and foreign. We hope you settle in smoothly and make your contribution to this university. You were hired on mate, and therefore we expect that you'll be able to deliver on your core duties and beyond. Let me also extend our appreciation, our chief guest and Mr. Chancellor, sir, to the TAC volunteers at KIU, TAC stands for Technical Aid Corp. A 60 in total have actually been deployed in, in KIU since 2021, 44 of whom have completed their services as at November 24th. We still have 16 who are volunteering and doing an excellent job and they are of top quality. We thank those who have served and successfully completed their two-year tenure and are now on their way back to Nigeria. In the same vein, our chief guest, let me take this opportunity to congratulate and warmly welcome His Excellency, 
Honorable Dr. Yusuf Buba Yakub, the newly appointed Director General of the TAC Directorate, Minister of Foreign Affairs in Nigeria. We assure His Excellence of the highest level of cooperation during his term of office. At the same time, let me greatly appreciate the immediate past Director General, His Excellency Dr. Pius Olakuni Osinkanami, for his great achievement during all the years of his service. He was and will continue to be a great friend, not only to KIU, but also to Uganda as a country and all the other beneficiary countries uh, for his excellent TAC volunteer scheme. To that end, Mr. Chancellor Sa and our chief guest we would like to thank the government of Nigeria through the Nigeria High Commission, I think they are presented here. I also wish to thank all our partners for the support in making KIU realize its mission and vision. We honor every partner and promise to continue with our collaborations. Some additional news we have from South Africa and Turkey. KIU has now opened relationships with various universities in those two countries. And I would like to recognize uh, Honorable Bonus Tupero, Her Excellency. Please stand up for recognition. Uh, stand up. She's the ambassador of the Republic of Uganda to Turkey, and she has already connected this university to Turkish universities. And uh, we, we are happy that this has opened doors. Uh, immediate universities and institutions that are going to partner with us include Archpadem University in Turkey, University of South Africa, University of Western Cape, University of Wastewaters Run, University of Pretoria, and the Center for Scientific and Industrial Research. We'll be communicating to you, our stakeholders, the outcomes of these new relationships. Now to the graduates. Today, Chief Guest and Mr. Chancellor Sir, we are graduating 1,862 out of more than 2,000 who would have graduated but have been unable for one reason or another. There are 13 nationalities that are represented in this graduation. 54% are males, 46% are females. Out of the 1,862, we are uh, 224 uh, postgraduates, that makes 12% 12, 12 of the whole number of graduates, and 88% are uh, undergraduates. Our chief guest, our target is to keep encroaching on the number of the undergraduate population by increasing on the number of the postgrad, because we understand very well the impact of having very strong postgraduate program and directorate that will push and propel research and innovation. So this is our target. And out of the postgraduates, we have 3% uh, are PhDs. Our PhD graduates, please wave. They are there. You'll be telling us the story of your research shortly. 48% obtained masters and 49% postgraduate diploma. Our chief guest, I want to thank again the Board of Trustees that decided since last August to date to offer 50% to all any student who would be joining KIU. We are expecting a jump in the number of graduates in the category of postgraduate in the years to come. Two to three years, we will see this turned around because of the offer that was given by the Board of Trustees for payment of only 50% of what there would be fees. In terms of science, engineering, technology and related disciplines versus what you would call arts, humanities and social sciences, for the first time, chief guest, for the first time, I'm sure this will be very beautiful music in your ears because you're a science promoter. The science specializations have surpassed the non-science. It's a big achievement. 51% against 49%. We would like to push further so that this keeps uh, going higher and higher up with your support and we'll seek your advice. We'll come to you. Congratulations to all of you. But for special mention, our 17 ladies and gentlemen who have distinguished themselves from the rest by attaining first class degrees. Can you clap for that group? And what is very interesting, we did a gender statistic about that. There are 
47% of the first class this year are ladies and 53% are gentlemen. The ladies, you are doing very well. You have come from far and you are heading there. So congratulations. They will be recognized by receiving special merit certificates uh, that will be given to them uh, before the end of this function. But I would like to make one special recognition. I'm going to read out these names quickly. But we have the top female student who is Ninshava Prose. She's a Uganda and she did a Bachelor of Social Work and Social Administration. Please don't be envious. Clap for her. She beat all the 1,861 and became the overall winner with a 4.78 CGPA. The second, who happened to be a male student and Tanzanian, is Atupele Joseph Mabaleke. Hongera sana. And I'm sure the Chancellor will have even a bigger smile because he's from Tanzania. So the names go as follows Ninshaba Prose, Atupe, Atupele Joseph Mabaleke, Tumukorere Musa, Nwajira Moses, uh, we have uh, Mujasi Ivan, Okampanais, Nwabi Inewilafos, Okongo Joseph, Silu Hukwa Aziz, Baka, Nakayaga, Nakayaga Shadia, Nabunya Zara, Nwatu Ine Patricia, Nadmanya Junior, Rukundo Joseph, Outa Simon Peter, Ashawome Anita, Gift Margaret Genge. Thank you for them again. Our Chairman Board of Trustees, we know you do not run out of your good heart. I would like to recommend that these top two students are given two privileges. One is you kindly accept we hire them, but secondly, you offer them scholarships to pursue a master's degree. This is an, a, a recommendation we have made as management, but we know when you get the microphone, you may declare even more things. As I conclude, our chief guest, we appeal to the government of Uganda to reset the student's loan scheme. We are aware of the financial hardships, but we also would like to suggest, and we believe that as private providers of higher education, KIU, for example, has demonstrated that we can actually give quality education. The old scheme of giving scholarships from which I benefited, Honorable Minister, I'm sure uh, you have some idea. I benefited from the government scheme. And that time it was only Makere University. As we speak, private universities have demonstrated their capacity to deliver quality. There are scholarships that are only dedicated to government institutions. Our proposal as KIU, representing the voices of private universities, why don't we actually centralize these scholarships and we, we distribute them, let the scholarships follow the students to their uh, interested or their choice of institution. If a student has qualified and he has qualified for medicine and KI is offering the best MBCHB program, then that scholarship should be awarded to KIU and we should allow the student to come to KIU, not limited to public universities. We request, request the Honorable Minister to help us deliver this message. It is going to even the ground and running now. This university is ranked number two in the whole country. So you are selling like hot cake, but remain hot, because if you don't, then you'll be in trouble because of the competition. Now, if you are coming from the second rank best university, you must demonstrate that you are actually second best. Okay? But among the private, we are number one. So if you are number one, we expect that you will demonstrate your attitudes, your skills, and all the knowledge that you have attained here, so that people can actually say, indeed, this is a KIU graduate, the number two overall, and the number one private. Allow me, Chairperson of Council, the Chancellor, and our Chief Guest, Chairperson of the Board of Trustees, to thank 
government ministries, the government of Uganda, Minister of Foreign Affairs, all foreign missions. And our chief guest today, this Gama Road is very smooth because as a university we applied to KCCA to allow a, a temporary stoppage of the road construction and we were given without any resistance. Let us clap for KCCA. So at least the road will remain smooth. We thank KCCA, Executive Director and her team, and also the contractors who are trying to improve our road. I thank my team of all staff, deans, principals, all service providers, and all guardians and parents and sponsors. We remain highly indebted to the chairman of the board, the, cha the chancellor, chairperson of the university council, for the unwavering support always. I and my team promise to work even harder to keep winning in all aspects. Out you go, graduates. Once again, congratulations for reaching this far. Your hard work and sacrifice has brought you to this pivotal moment. I commend you for the, your determination and focus, but also wish to remind you as a parent, as a vice chancellor, as an educationist, I want to remind you that your time at this university was just the beginning of your lifelong pursuit of knowledge and success. In today's ever-changing world, there are clear and indirect life challenges, but in between the lines lie great opportunities for those who strive and remain positive in attitude. Go out there and grab both the low-hanging opportunities and the ones that are highly elevated. Go grab them. Who knows which one will uh, drive you to success. We can only wish you the best of all. Please, I know you are about to go celebrate. Keep safe and healthy. I should use the analogy of, you know, good things, or he who laughs, he laughs best, he laughs last. Keep healthy. Take care of your, your health. Do not live a reckless life. Do not celebrate and destroy your future but also we invite you to return for those who would like to do postgraduate programs and those who would like to join us to explore the heights i thank all of you for listening to me for god and my country muhammad Ntezamigo, your vice chancellor thank you Mr. Chancellor, sir, protocol requires that I take this opportunity to invite the chairperson of the University Council, Honorable Michael Mawanda, to come and give his address. And we warmly welcome our chairperson of council. Thank you. And it will be him who will invite the chairperson, Board of Trustees, Honorable Alhaji Dr. Hassan Basajalaba. Thank you very much, our dear Vice-Chancellor. Before I make my speech, our Chief Guest and, and Chancellor, as requested by the Vice-Chancellor in respect to decentralizing the scholarships, our Chief Guest, I'll add my voice on yours to request government to decentralize government scholarships to various private universities so that students can be able to join universities of their own choice. So we'll pursue it and we'll let you know how far we shall go. I am Mohanda Michael Maranga, acting chairperson University Council member of parliament 
for Igalese constituency, Bushain district. Our chief guest, the Honorable Minister of Science and Technology, Honorable Dr. Monica Museno Masanza, the Chancellor of Kampala International University, Honorable Ministers present here, Your Excellencies, Ambassadors and High Commissioners, Fellow Honorable Members of Parliament present here, Chairman and Members of the Board of Trustees of Kampala International University, the University Council, Members of the University Council, Vice Chancellor of International University, Vice Chancellors of other universities, Deputy Vice Chancellors and other members of Kampala International Management, Kampala University Management, Kampala International University Academic Administrative and Support Staff, KIU Student Get Leadership, our dear parents and guardians, dear graduates invited guests, ladies and gentlemen, in your respective capacities. Before I make my speech, may I request my fellow members of council to stand up for recognition. Members of council, can we receive them with a, a hand clap? Thank you, those are members of university council. On behalf of Kampala International University Council, and on my own behalf, I want to welcome you to this 28th graduation ceremony of Kampala International University. I congratulate you, the young ladies and gentlemen, on, your, on, on their various academic achievements and their parents, guardians and sponsors for supporting their academic endeavors. In a special way, I would like to congratulate once again the six PhD graduates who are receiving the academic awards today. May I request that we also clap for them. Congratulations and thank you very much. Mr. Sang Sarasa, allow me to congratulate you and the Board of Trustees, the University Council, and the entire University Management on this great achievement, which is a clear demonstration that indeed, KIU will continue scaling and conquering great heights. Kampala International University continues to rank as the best private university in Uganda and in the region demonstrating its capacity as the university to reckon with. The research and innovations output at KIU currently are a testimony to the growth that it has gone through. It is impressive to maintain such a consistency in a highly dynamic and changing environment, and we urge all stakeholders to keep seeking for opportunities to improve on the great work that KIU had demonstrated. This 28th graduation marks another great output as we witness yet another output of close 2,000 students graduating with degrees and diplomas. I am glad that Kampala International University has led on this front, which I can attribute to the commitment of all stakeholders to KIU University, especially the Chairman, Board of Trustees, Alhaj, Dr. Hassan Basajewanawa, and his entire board. I request that we clap for him. Thank you. I commend the Vice Chancellor, Professor Muhammad Mpezamihingo, for the outstanding performance. The Deputy Vice Chancellors, the management team, the University Senate, the academic and non academic staff, the students, our strategic partners, and all key stakeholders that have played key roles in supporting KIU to deliver on its mandate. I would like to once again congratulate the honorary members of the University Council who unceasingly and expeditiously bring their intellect and wealth of professional experience to the University Council. To the graduates, today, with a lot of excitement, you make your entry into the world of work and employment. I urge you to always do more than what is expected of you with this that work is a calling to be able to contribute to the development of this country. I once again congratulate you, the staff of KIU, the parents and guardians and all other KIU stakeholders. Finally, our dear graduates, parents and invited guests, I also bring you greetings from your friend, Jerome Moskine Rava, 
who congratulates our today's graduates and requests you to keep to live healthy, keep safe, so that you can be able to pursue whatever you want in this world when you are living in a healthy mood. That God gains living a reckless life. He once again congratulates you and requests you that come 2026, don't forget him. Thank you so much. I am Mr. Michael Maranga, Chairman of Council. May I this juncture take the opportunity to invite through you, Chancellor and Guest of Honor, our Chairman Board of Trustees to address the congregation. Chairman Board of Trustees, KIU. Thank you very much, Honorable Michael Mawanda, the Vice Chancellor of the International University, Vice Chancellors, Rectors, other universities, institutions of higher learning, Deputy Vice Chancellors, other members of Campus International University Management, academic staff, support staff, our special guest. Alumni, Kampala International University, continuing students who are here, guardians, ladies, and gentlemen. I will not speak a lot today, but first of all, I will thank very much our special guest, Dr. Monica Musonera, for coming today. Second, I didn't want to say it, but I thought I, thought I, should, I should say it. Honorable Monica Musonera did a great job when we were starting a medical school in 2000, when we were developing the curriculum. And also, she supported us to start as our first head of department of microbiology. Honorable Minister, I will thank you for that. With your colleague, because we were starting that medical school, we didn't have people, but also Professor Nakavuma, she was her colleague in Makerere. They came, requested for a two year leave in Makerere, and gave us two years to set up. A department of microbiology in 2001 up to 2003. Thank you very much for the work done, Professor and Doctor. I will not forget that. Secondly, since you are here in Rinyangwe, they say, Uganda, that's where you get the chief, that's where you rest from. Since you are here, Doctor and my sister. I think, although you have just answered me, that you only found the best proposals, but I think you saw how we participated in the previous show, which was in Kororo, and I think it would be very important for me, myself, to ask you from here, that we request you to support us, and support our research, support our innovations, and if need be, if you have something that we need other proposals, you can tell us privately or directly or indirectly, and then we add them on, but you will also access that funding for research and innovation from a government from government funding. Number two, I will thank our Chancellor, Professor Mugai. In fact, I want you to clap for Professor. When I was talking with Professor Mugaya, requesting him to become our Chancellor, he was our chairperson of the University Council in, in, in Dar es Salaam. One of the problems I told him was that we are getting, we are not getting enough resources in doing our research. He advised us to do three things. One, 
we must team up with other institutions to get a lot of money. Because as the VC has already said, he talked about having 300 grants proposals and it is not simple and easy to get these proposals written. But Mr. Chancellor, with your management, I will thank you very much for the work done. However, when I was talking to Mugaya, Professor Mugaya, Chancellor, now we are starting to see the yields that he advised us to do. One, he told us that we have to write with other institutions. Two, he told us that we must have right people. Then I defied a colleague, Professor Andrew Kitua. Professor Andrew Kitua, he's also from Tanzania. But you can imagine, in a short time, these people, and I'm surprised the professor they had not known that actually, on top of the 4 million euros that we've already won, we have also won, just yesterday, 2 million pounds. They have just been told by, by professor. All these are efforts of our staff, but mainly, I will thank so much these 6 million dollars, three people. One is Professor Yunus Mugaya, because he was involved in this. Professor Andrew Kitua, he was involved in this, and our Vice Chancellor. I will thank them very much because in a short time, and I think what I thought that was going to be difficult, it will be very easy, because the starting is very good, and I can see where we are going. Also, what I was talking to Professor the Chancellor, which we are going to discuss after this meeting, is that we want the institutional money to be visible. I think you will help me, Vice Chancellor, and also Professor Munga. For example, if we can develop the postgraduate students, PhD students, for the money, because on this money we have some money which is for the institution, which is, which is supposed to come directly to the university. I want you to help me, Vice Chancellor, together with Chancellor and the Deputy Vice Chancellor of Research, we use, utilize this money, which is for institutional research, I mean for institutional money, to develop other people and to develop research, and also to have a good infrastructure to get more funding for research. Of course, I will thank the members of the council, headed by Professor Honorable Michael Mawanda. This is my, my, my elder brother, Michael Mawanda. We grew up together, and I'm very happy when they told me the way how the meeting of the council went, and I thank you very much also, I told, I told you, they told me that you took it very well, and now when we go back, he's a member of the board, but I will ask management, we confirm him as the chairperson of council, we don't need to look for another chairperson. We get him as our chairperson of the university council, such that he can drive this institution to explore the heights. Of course, with other members and committees of the council, Professor, Chairperson of one of the, of the Committee of the Council, Professor of Appointments Committee, my sister, again, thank you for the work done. She updates me on every move that they move, and I thank you very much. Hmm? No, Professor Jessica, for the work done, because Jessica Nakavma has been a member of council for a long time, and now she's the chairperson of the appointments committee. The people that you've had the read here, who have been promoted to associate professor, she's, she's the one who is driving that. And thank you very much, professor, and well done. Of course, I will thank everybody. I will thank management, the team of Professor Mpeza, and others, guardians who have supported the students, also, we have supported most of the students here. And the Chancellor, you know here we had COVID for three years. The reason why we are supposed to have like 3,000 students, but the reason why we have few students, these are the students who were in COVID. They started with COVID. Some actually, some I think dropped out, very many dropped out. So I will thank the parents for supporting this, your children, for the work done. Otherwise, other children dropped out because of COVID, because here we were closed for three years. Universities were closed for three years. So these students who have finished, I think you clap the hands to your parents. Because it was difficult.
for them to finish. People were only struggling to look for food, struggling to look for where to get treatment, but other parents also struggled to keep paying fees for their children. Parents, thank you very much for the work done. It is very simple because even me, I had children, but I was struggling. You get food, you get this, you get others also to survive. And again, you pay for your children. It wasn't easy. So parents, thank you very much and well done. Then I'll go back to management. As I earlier advised the Professor Mpeza, it is, it is good before finishing this graduation we have seen the grants that we've got. These two grants that you vote for. I mean, we've gotten these grants like in a period of about three months. Two, three months. Two, three months to get six million dollars granted. No, no, actually this is like 7.5 because it is one is in euro, another one is in pounds. It's about seven million dollars. It's not easy. However, as advised before, keep your staff going to other institutions to see what they are doing, like what you did last time in South Africa and what other staff did to, to Kenya. Keep them moving. Otherwise, if they stick here and they stay here, they don't know what they are doing, they will just stay there and will not get, we shall not get anything. So keep them moving. Another point, we have a lot of grants which are for students. Grants course. These students need to know that they are grants for students. Students, they are grants for you. I think he, Professor Andrew Kitua, it is very important to put a system because we have over, over like, how many cores? About 4,000 cores which are ready for everybody to write for grants. I think management, you have to take that responsibility of making the students to know that they are cores for the students such that they can write and get those grants. So especially postgraduate, you can write, get money for your, I mean for your research and which can also support you in doing your studies when you, during your, your proposal writing or those, there are monies that you can write and get. So management take, take, take charge and let students get through their monies that they can it is very important they don't know lastly you've requested that we give one or two students the scholarship but for me what i have seen because these students have come from covid we are going to take all the 17 students who got the first class to do their masters to come and do their masters at free without paying any money, including the research money the university should pay. So, I will not speak beyond that because time has already gone. Students, you are starting a new life. This is your advice. And life now is very difficult. It's a bit complicated. It's complex. So go slowly and reach where you are going. Don't live here and become a thug and be rude for money quickly, it's not easy. Move slowly, plan well, and you reach where you are going. I don't know that the proverb in, in, in Uganda, that when you go slowly by slowly, you reach where you are going, not so. When you move slowly by slowly, but steadily, you will arrive where you are going. So students, this world is not simple. Move slowly, plan, think, and you reach where you are going. Parents, I thank you very much for looking after your children. Students, I thank you very much for being patient, especially those ones who did medicine and the health sciences because they went through a lot of problems especially for when they say that they can come back and, and study at that stage, we lost some students because of COVID. And some other students sort of got, got sick. So I thank you very much for your 
patience to finish your program because it wasn't easy and other students went through hardships. All of you, thank you and may God bless you. Thank you very much. Can we give a better hand clap to our, our Tata education? I'm very sure for the people who've gone through this place, know that you are because he is. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, before we go to the next speaker, let's recognize a few of our additional guests. With us this afternoon is the Deputy Registrar, Mone University, representing the VC, Mr. Tumwebaze Nicholas. Stand up for recognition, please. We also have a representative from the Somali Embassy from the Pocket of Education and Culture in the names of Mr. Liban Hussein Dero. Also present is the Registrar Allied Health, Dr. Mpima Patrick. We have a representative from the Foundation of Human Rights, Ms. Namakula Aida Kiza. The Vice Rector in Charge of Academic Affairs in IUIU, Dr. Jamil Saranga is with us. It's nice having you. Uh, we also have the Permanent Secretary, Minister of Internal Affairs, Lieutenant General Joseph B. Masanyufu. Sir, you're welcome. We have a representative from the Tanzanian Embassy from the Promotions Office, Investment and Tourism, uh, Israel Mayo Tumaini. Please stand up for recognition. Another person from the Tanzanian Embassy, Defense Attache Office, is Rich Richard Nchali. You're welcome. Also, Chairperson of Women Council, Kampala District, Madam Joy Kichoncho, is with us. It's great having you. In the house too, we have Haj Yusuf Kizimana, Engineer Edwin Adiamanya. And we also have clergy in the house. Reverend Canon Kenneth and Mrs. Robina Kanyankole from the Church of Uganda are in the house too. You are all warmly welcome. And on that note, Mr. Chancellor, may I be permitted to invite the Vice Chancellor to welcome you to address the audience. Thank you so much. Uh, I also want to recognize the presence of the Permanent Secretary, Minister of Internal Affairs. Sir. Could you stand, kindly stand up for recognition? Thank you very much. Uh, Internal Affairs helps us a lot with student and staff issues, especially for the, those who, are out, who come from out of Uganda. Uh, Mr. Chancellor, sir, among the people they introduced, and this shows how far KIU has gone, is uh, a former student here in our School of Engineering, Mr. Edwin Ariamanya, is now the Dispatch Engineer, Uganda Electricity Transmission Company Limited. So I want him to stand up. He's the one responsible for switching on and off electricity. And I hope uh, we shall, the power will be on until we finish. Mr. Chancellor, sir, may I now take the honor to invite you as we put our hands together to come the Chancellor, please. Chairman, Board of Trustees, we are so grateful. As I told you, we requested for two, we got the 17. We pray to God to give you more wealth, please, and health. Chief Guest, Honorable Dr. Monica Musenero Masanza, the Minister for Science, Technology and Innovation of the Republic of Uganda, Honorable Cabinet Ministers present here today, Honorable Members of Parliament, Chairman and Members of the Board of Trustees, Chairperson and Members of the University Council, 
the Vice Chancellor of KU, Vice Chancellors and Rectors of other universities and institutions of higher learning, Deputy Vice Chancellors, other members of KU management, academic, administrative, and support staff, special guests, alumni of Kampala International University, continuing students of KU, grad ones, ladies and gentlemen in various capacities, good morning, habari za asubuhi, good to know. I'm grateful to the Almighty God for blessing us with good and satisfying health. For me, it has been six months since we last reached out to each other, so I'm very happy to be here today. It is my singular honor and pleasure as the Chancellor of Kampala International University to welcome you all to the 28th graduation and awards ceremony, which is being held today, the 25th of November, 2023. I want to welcome our chief guest, Honorable Dr. Monica Musenero Masanza, the Minister of Science, Technology, and Innovation of the Republic of Uganda. Allow me to express my sincerest gratitude for accepting our invitation despite your demanding schedule in the national service. Honorable Minister, I'm delighted to be associated with you as we share a common interest in science and they're both trained and practicing scientists. I'm a marine biologist and I previously held the position of Deputy Vice Chancellor responsible for planning, finance, and administration at the University of Dar es Salaam, with which I still maintain an association to this day. Ladies and gentlemen, and esteemed guests, allow me to provide some insight into the remarkable achievements of our chief guest today, so that you may truly appreciate the distinguished individual among us. Honorable Dr. Musenero is an accomplished Ugandan veterinarian, microbiologist, and epidemiologist. She currently serves as a consultant epidemiologist to the government of Uganda and acts as an advisor to the president of Uganda on matters concerning epidemics and pandemics. Her previous role included serving as the principal epidemiologist and the assistant commissioner for epidemiology and surveillance in the Uganda Ministry of Health. Dr. Musenero has played crucial roles in leading the efforts to control Ebola epidemics in Uganda, the Democratic Republic of Congo, and Sierra Leone in West Africa. During the recent COVID-19 outbreak, she played a pivotal role as the chief scientist in advising the government of Uganda. Guidance has been instrumental in successfully navigating the pandemic, and her contributions are well remembered by all Ugandans. Please join me in extending heartfelt congratulations to Honorable Minister for her outstanding achievements and dedication in serving the nation. Uh, dear Chief, uh, Chief Guest, I would like to bring to your attention as introduced that I'm a Tanzanian citizen who has followed your life journey with great admiration and I have been uplifted by the positive impact you have made on humanity. At KU we are both honored and delighted that you graciously accepted our invitation to chief guest today. Your selection is particularly meaningful to us because in addition to your remarkable achievements we have information, and we've just been informed here that you once volunteered as a lecturer at KU Western Campus in the early year of our medical school's establishment. Today, KU proudly houses the medical school, the largest medical school in the country, which has consistently produced high-skilled health professionals. I emphasize the term quality here because our institute takes pride in rigorously upholding the standards of education in various health science disciplines, including medicine, pharmacy, nursing, and allied health sciences. Furthermore, we have recently expanded our academic offerings at the postgraduate level, introducing programs such as PhDs in medicine, 
pharmacy, public health, and a wide range of biomedical sciences. It is worth noting that these programs have all received the accreditation from the National Council for Higher Education in Uganda. Once again, we express our sincere gratitude for your presence as our esteemed chief guest today. Your association with KU holds deep significance and we are thrilled to have this opportunity to showcase our institution's growth and achievements through our graduates, through the, the, the research that we do, etc. You are truly an exemplary model, particularly for young women scientists and professionals. Your dedication and achievements during your tenure as the Minister of Science, Technology and Innovation have greatly inspired many. At KU, we share your commitment to research, innovation and technology. We actively support and promote these areas, recognizing their vital role in addressing societal challenges. Under your esteemed leadership, we are eager to collaborate with your ministry to champion scientific interventions that can, con can contribute to meaningful solutions for society. Once again, please accept our warmest welcome. We hope that you feel at home amongst us, and we are honored to have you here today. Distinguished Chief Guest, esteemed ladies and gentlemen, I would like to extend a heartfelt welcome to the Chairman, esteemed members of the Board of Trustees, Chairperson, and the respected members of the U.S. Council. We deeply appreciate the tremendous work you all undertake in this esteemed institution. The Board of Trustees plays a critical role in providing strategic guidance, overseeing governance, and ensuring the fulfillment of the university's mission and vision. Your commitment and expertise contribute significantly to KIU's growth, progress, and success. Similarly, the University Council, under the exceptional leadership of the chairperson, and the dedication of its esteemed members plays a vital role in shaping the direction of the university. Your collective efforts have been instrumental in fostering an environment of excellence, innovation, and continuous improvement. We recognize and commend your invaluable contributions as you work tirelessly to uphold the highest standards of education, facilitate academic development, and foster a vibrant and inclusive community at KIU. I would like to specifically acknowledge the remarkable contributions of Dr. Alhaj Hassan Basajabalaba, the Chairman of the Board of Trustees, who has made tremendous and ongoing contributions to private higher education. His efforts have extended not only to Uganda, but also to Tanzania and the entire East African region. Ladies and gentlemen and our graduates, today marks a momentous occasion as we gather here to witness the 28th uh, convocation of KU, and it is my distinct pleasure as the Chancellor to be a part of this event for the second time. Over the past six months since the 27th graduation ceremony, our university has accomplished significant milestones under the educated management team. And here I would like to express my sincere appreciation to the management team led by uh, the exceptional Vice Chancellor, Professor Mohamed Mpesamigo. Under his visionary guidance, the university has experienced remarkable growth and development. I'm proud to share that due to his unwavering commitment, KU has consistently been ranked as as the second overall university in Uganda, and this, is, this achievement is a testament to his passion in education to fostering excellence in education and research. I would also like to acknowledge the efforts of the entire management team who have worked tirelessly to expand partnerships, as we have been told, informed, secure grants, and enhance the university's visibility. These endeavors 
have not only contributed to the growth of KU, but have also strengthened its reputation as a peer institution of higher learning in Uganda and beyond. I extend my heartfelt gratitude again to the Vice Chancellor and the management team for the exceptional leadership which has propelled KIU to new heights. Your unwavering commitment to excellence has enabled countless students to acquire quality education and has made a positive impact on our society. Let us all applaud the management team for their outstanding achievements and express our gratitude for their continuous efforts in making KIU a center of excellence in Uganda and beyond. I'm grateful to the Board of Trustees for their strategic decision to bring on board additional senior and technical staff, including uh, Professor Andrew Kitua. With his, with his valuable experience in winning and implementing grant-funded projects, Professor Kitua's expertise will undoubtedly contribute significantly to the continued success of KIU. The appointment of such individuals demonstrates the university's commitment to attracting exceptional talent and fostering a culture of excellence and their presence will further strengthen the capacity of the university in research, grant acquisition and the project implementation, thereby enhancing KIU's reputation as an institution of academic distinction. Furthermore, I'm pleased to learn that the management team is actively cultivating proactive partnerships and collaborations with Africa and beyond. Collaborations of this nature are instrumental in promoting knowledge, exchange, research collaboration, and academic excellence. By engaging with institutions regionally and globally, KIU broadens its horizons, enriches its academic offerings, and embarks on a path of global prominence. I would like to commend the management team for their forward-thinking approach in seeking out these partnerships and collaborations. This effort will undoubtedly open doors to new opportunities, foster innovation, and pave the way for meaningful engagement with the esteemed institutions. As Chandler, I encourage the management team to continue their commitment to creating proactive partnerships and collaborations in Africa and beyond. Together, we can drive positive change, foster academic excellence, and uplift communities through the path of education. Once again, I express my gratitude to the Board of Trustees and the management team for their dedication and efforts in strengthening KU's human resources human resources and fostering strategic collaborations. Your endeavors are invaluable in positioning KIU as a leading institution in the academic landscape. Let us persevere and strive to achieve greater heights as we work towards realizing our shared vision of academic excellence, research innovation and societal impact. Let me now address myself to our special guests of day, the graduates. First of all, let me congratulate you for attaining success in your studies and making us happy that your efforts did not go down the drain. It is your responsibility to go to the world and demonstrate your skills, knowledge and good attitudes. Please bear in mind that regardless of your actions and your location, you will forever be viewed through the lens of KIU. Therefore, it is important to note that you should never limit yourself or disregard potential work and job opportunities that are legal and can positively contribute to your well-being, the well-being of your family and the broader society. 
feel free to explore diverse avenues of, for personal and professional growth as long as they align with the law and ethical standards. in making your journey a success and bringing us to this moment of celebration where we can acknowledge and honor your achievements. Your collective efforts have played a crucial role in shaping this outcome and I'm truly grateful for the various roles each of you has fulfilled. The deans and the principals of your respective schools faculties and colleges have attested to your commendable character. Therefore, I urge each and every one of you to uphold and further enhance your exceptional character and behavior as you transition into the professional world. Sup strive to surpass your current achievements, continuously improving and setting higher standards for yourselves. By upholding excellent character and conduct, you will not only excel in your chosen careers, but also contribute positively to the society you serve. In concluding my remarks, I would like to extend my heartfelt gratitude to the parents, guardians, sponsors, and all other internal and external stakeholders who care you. Your immense contributions to this university have taken various forms, including financial, material, social, political, and the other forms of support. Your dedication and investment have been instrumental in the growth and success of this institution. I kindly, I kindly request that we continue to foster this spirit of collaboration and support as we embark on our shared journey to explore new heights. Together, we can build an even stronger and more prosperous community, benefiting not only the university, but also the broader society. Your continued involvement is truly appreciated. And I can, I'm confident that with your creative efforts, we can achieve even greater milestones in the future. Once again, I extend my gratitude to our esteemed chief guest for gracing this significant occasion with her presence. I would also like to express my appreciation to all the special guests who have joined us today, lending further significance to this event. A special acknowledgement goes to the hardworking graduation organizing team for their dedicated efforts in planning and executing this ceremony. Without their commitment and their attention to detail, this event would not have been possible. I would also like to thank members of the press, service providers, and all those who have made a positive contribution to ensure the success of this function. Your collective support has been invaluable. I humbly request your understanding and forgiveness if any of the arrangements did not fully meet your expectations. We acknowledge that there is always room for improvement and we assure you that we will strive to do better in the future. Your feedback is invaluable to us and we will take it into account to enhance future events. I thank you all and may, and may the good Lord and Almighty Allah bless you. Thank you very much for your kind attention. Okay. I would like to take this opportunity to now welcome our chief guest, Dr. Monica, to come and address us. Our chief guest, please welcome.
the Chancellor, Kampala International University, Honorable Ministers present, the Honorable Members of Parliament present, the Chair and Members of the Board of Trustees, the Chairperson and Members of the University Council, the Vice Chancellor, Kampala International University, Vice Chancellors, and the high level leaders of, from other universities, Deputy Vice Chancellors, other members of KIU management, and staff of KIU, special guests, the alumni of Kampala International University, continuing students and the graduates, ladies and gentlemen in your respective capacities. I salute you and thank you for honoring the invitation to be here to attend this great occasion where I am officiating as guest of honor. I'm exceedingly happy to be invited here at KU as chief guest, officiating now at the 28th uh, graduation and award ceremony held today, uh, this Saturday, the 25th of November, 2023. It has always been a pleasure to come to this university because I have watched its growth, I have watched it starts from nothing and it has now blossomed into a prestigious, very impactful institution, not only in Uganda, but all over Africa. Congratulations, KIU. Uh, before I delve further into the rest of my speech, allow me to make a few remarks out of my heart, but also responding to some of the issues which have been raised. Um, in my capacity as Minister for Science, Technology and Innovation, and therefore part of the government of Uganda, and part of cabinet, and policy and decision-making bodies. I'd like to make a response to some of the issues which have been raised by the first speakers before I read my written message to you. First, as the Minister of Science, Technology and Innovation, we are looking for something. We, we have a special responsibility we have had great science in our universities across Africa. But we have not yet seen the impact of that science on our economies. Therefore, the role of my ministry and of me as the minister is to link science to the economy because we discovered there was a gap in understanding of how this great science with all these great professors, the time they spend working, how does it matter to the economy that when these graduates live here, they are going to find jobs, they are going to earn an income. And so that's the responsibility of my ministry because many people don't understand they often confuse us with the ICT. No, we are Minister of Science, Technology and Innovation. We are at the office of the President. Academia is, um, above all things, a national development undertaking. And science helps us to address a number of issues that academia is intending to address. So science addresses two problems, two challenges in society. It addresses poverty 
because we have the resources that we need, but those resources need to be understood and developed through science, technology, and innovation, and so create opportunities as populations grow so that every member of our nation can have a gainful livelihood, can have an opportunity to apply themselves and live happily in the nation that they have been placed in. So if our nation is poor, then we have not yet applied science properly. If our nation is still underdeveloped, then we have not yet appropriately, effectively applied science. So that is the work and the task that we have. I am glad to hear that Honorable uh, Chagulani, leader of one of the political parties in the country, is here. I salute you. Uh, as leaders of parliament, as leaders of political parties, as leaders in the various capacities, leaders of religious bodies, it's important that we all understand the critical importance of science, technology, and innovation, because we all have a role to play. In my few years since I graduated and started to work, which is over 30 years ago, I have learned that life has two components. The first are the fundamentals. The fundamentals are required with all of us. Each one of us gets up and breathes in oxygen. Everybody needs oxygen. Should it be cut off, it doesn't matter. We all need food. We all need some basic infrastructure. And we all need science, technology, and innovation. So irrespective of your tribe, of your race, of your nationality, of your political party, we need science, technology, and innovation as one of the fundamentals. It's therefore important that both as academicians, as leaders in our various capacities, we deeply understand the role of this ingredient, because it is what separates developed countries from underdeveloped countries. If they say your country is underdeveloped, it means you have not properly developed your science, technology, and innovation. That is exactly what it means. So as we work together in the nation, we need to understand that the fundamentals to which most important is science, technology, and innovation, all of us are responsible for supporting it, for developing it, and for growing it. Then the rest are virungo. You know virungo, you add. Once you have the fundamentals, then you have the virungo, which are based on different people's ideology. So what are we doing at Science, Technology, and Innovation? We have defined for the first time how science is linked to the economy. Uh, we have what we call a highway, and Vice Chancellor, I will invite myself in the near future to come and engage with the university on this highway. But allow me to just hit a few things. We have five milestones along this highway for us to move to the place where we want. The first is science. What is science? Science is knowledge. There has been a lot of controversy in the country or scientists this is a scientist, this is a non-scientist. In the proper science, we don't have such uh, definitions. Science is knowledge. It is systematically collected knowledge that leads us to a firm conclusion. It might be legal science, 
it might be social science, it might be technical science, engineering science. So it, it is really when you have knowledge which has been packaged, we call that science. Then we, when we apply that science to create tools which are either uh, engineering tools or they are medical tools or they are something you've packaged that science or a social tool that helps people to live better, then we call that technology. So the first stop is science. Do we understand the fundamentals in nature? The second is, can we package that knowledge to create tools that address our development? The third stop is, can we package the science and the tools such that we can be able to solve problems of society? That's what we call innovation. Because we can have a lot of innovations in the university around here, while the people outside here in Kansanga, they don't really feel that these tools are impacting on their lives. They are the science done here. The fourth stop is industry. The science, the technology, and the innovation must, must translate into industries. And then the industries must build enterprises. And once those enterprises are able to sell things, then we have completed the journey of science, technology, and innovation. So we move from science up to enterprise. So this journey requires that we work together as academicians, as professionals, as the general public, as leaders, each of us making our contribution at each of those steps as much as possible. There are phases when I need technical people. I need the professor of, uh, of engineering. Then there is a phase where I need a lawyer to register this operation in the right format. And then there is a phase when I need the human capital specialist to tell me which kind of skills I need. So there are different phases, so let's not uh, spread a lot of uh, uh, fragmentation, but let's work together. I'm glad to hear, therefore, that the university participated. And uh, I must say, I visited a number of stalls exhibited by KIU. And I was quite impressed by the thinking and by the science and the beginnings of develop translating that science into tools. I deliberately told you the five stops so that you can follow me. Uh, so most of what you showed me exhibited a lot of science and a little bit of translation into tools. And so we need to walk them through innovation, through industry, and through enterprise so that we can translate those ideas into development uh, points for the nation and provide the jobs and the development that we need. I wish to inform you that we are following up with all the exhibited um, products at Science Week, not only this year, but in all the three. And uh, we want to sit with the innovators and examine in detail and see where we can take this. I was telling the chairman, board of trustees, that for us, we don't follow names, we follow ideas. If you have a great idea, it doesn't matter whether you are private or public university. We support great ideas. And actually we have no distinction at all. It's not anything else, but it is the quality and promise of your idea and the quality and promise of your team to work and bring this idea to an enterprise. I usually allocate, and I've done this in many universities, when I visit, I allocate a member of staff at Science, Technology, and Innovation to be your focal person. Uh, and um, for KIU, I wish to allocate Mr. David Gonahasa. 
He didn't come with me today, but my personal assistant is here who delivered the message. Mr. David Gonahasa will be your focal person. Uh, you'll get his contact, and he will come and lead the team to examine all the innovations, even those that you did not exhibit, so that we can work and see which ones we can prioritize to push forward. Um, Mr. Vice Chancellor, I heard in your speech you are saying you wish to publish. Yes, publishing is very important, but make sure before you publish, you have protected our ideas. The moment you are it's no longer patent eligible. So make sure that we, if you need support from my office, We'll be happy to support you, but we work a lot with the Uganda Registration Services Bureau to make sure that ideas are protected before they are published. I also wish to uh, have noted uh, the requests made by the various speakers concerning scholarships, concerning uh, the loans. I promise I'll deliver this information both to the Minister of Education, who is in charge, but also to cabinet these requests. Uh, as you have heard, um, I'm a member of staff of KU. Because, Chair, I don't remember getting either a termination of my contract I don't remember getting that, so I'm still a member of staff of KIU. Uh, so uh, I'll, I'll give my speech in that context. So, and um, I really wish to thank um, Mr. It's now Dr. Vasaja Varava for the resilience. Because I was with him in the beginnings of this institution, and the challenges were many. They were really, really many. To get to this site, remember him telling me a story about a very dramatic incident when somebody refused to give land. And it's, it's really, really heartwarming to see what it has become now. It's very, very heartwarming. Thank you for the greet. Thank you for the resilience and for the nationalities. It's not just Uganda come here. It's like a bee tree. Now they come and rest in the shade of what you have done. Congratulations. Old conversations, but some of them we will go back and talk. Um, I am here today to join you in these celebrations and also to deliver an important message from the ministry which I have detailed to you and to help care you uh, not just the graduates, because you, the graduates you are entering the world of work. It's important that you know what government sectors do and the opportunities out there. But I'm also here to tell you specifically about science, technology, and innovation. Uh, as I have said, uh, the growth of this university demonstrates that life, even what others see as impossibilities, they are possible as long as you have focus, positive attitude, and resilience. And I really hope that this is transmitted to those who go through the hands of the great team at KIU. I'm therefore not surprised that KIU runs the largest medical school in the country with the widest network of referral hospitals in the country, including, among others, Fort Porto, Hoima, Moveni, Lira, Jija, Yuga, and some district hospitals in Western Uganda and in Chiriandongo, let alone a host of other health centers in the different parts of the country. 
uh, I wish to mention here, one time I was with one of the members, senior members in the health, um, in, that, uh, in, in the health fraternity. And that person, I think, was one of the external examiners. I will not reveal who the person was, but we met in a different firm. And we were saying, those KIU students, you can stretch them. They really have content. So, um, I'm sure that KIU supports the delivery of health services through the hiring of additional consultants and provision of sundries and items used in various hospitals and health facilities. I want to thank the Chairman, Board of Trustees, Dr. Al Hassan uh, Basajabaraba, for this vision and hard work to grow this university. Because ladies and gentlemen, especially you graduates, it's very easy and cheap to give up. It's easy and cheap to give excuses. It's easy and cheap to, to allocate blame. It's easy and cheap to, 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 to judge other people. That one has succeeded because of this favor. But it's very expensive and difficult to win. It's very expensive to stay on course. It's very expensive to build something that is sound, that stands the test of time. So my meeting point with uh, Chairman Hassan is the fact that the, he blends a business, not-for-profit model with education provision. This is the model we want to champion, where universities uh, they cease operating in this very traditional model. They must adopt technology in all their operations without which they face the danger of extinction in the coming few years. We are all aware that the world is changing very fast. And you either quickly and rapidly adapt or you are forgotten. So on behalf of the government of Uganda, I wish to inform the nation that funds have been set aside to promote science, technology, and innovation, uh, for which we usually issue the calls for proposals in media, and uh, we publish calls in both print media and on social media. As we speak, the recent National Science Week exhibition, we demonstrated that even beyond the government, Funding, government funding, investors, both local and international, are interested in putting money and other resources to commercialize and do business from promising innovations by universities and other research institutions. Uh, for those of you who are not there, we brought in 74 uh, venture capital uh, companies from all over the world and they came here because they have heard what we are doing and they are interested in the innovations in our country. So I call upon KIU to take lead among the private universities and attract both government and other investors to actualize her own research and innovation agenda. I'm aware of some of the KIU teams that are on the vaccine development tasks and I think this demonstrates the thinking and the philosophy that we have, that where there are great people and where there are great ideas, we go there. So when the, during the COVID, uh, the president supported us to initiate, to do work which has never been done in the country before, through preside, His Excellency, the president, uh, General Yoweri Kagutam 7 uh, sent me to lead this and I was able to get some very unique skills from KIU. Actually some of those skills, the only person who can do those, those skills is a member of staff here. So I'm able to accommodate more teams if you plan accordingly and mainstream your research agenda with that of the National Science, Technology and Innovation Plan, which plan we are very, very generous with and for which I am going to invite 
myself uh, to come and have a very, very detailed discussion with the Vice Chancellor and his team. Lastly, I want, uh, okay, not very lastly, I want to thank the parents. Parents, you are heroes. You are heroes. It's not easy. It's not easy to support a student through private education. It's not because you have a lot, but it is because of the vision and dream you have for your child. And some of you have supported, uh, not if they are not even your children, but you've made them your dependents. And you've taken responsibility to support them. May I request all the graduates to stand and we give a rousing applause to the parents. Thank you very much. And to our graduates, you have been supported. Some of you have even supported yourselves. You have shown resilience. The fact that today you are donning that gown is a symbol that you are a person of quality. You are a person who is value added. And so therefore you are an asset. You are an asset to Uganda. You are an asset to Africa. You are an asset to your family. So I want to congratulate you. But with this asset comes responsibility. Are you going to look after the asset? I heard you are such a well of a nose business. And knows the definition of an asset in business and a liability. So we needed to ask ourselves, none of us wants to become a liability. We want to now become an asset. Moreover, maybe a cash cow. What adds value more and more, not just the same amount, but increasingly. As I informed you, in 1993, in January, I sat in a graduation like you, and that is over 20 years ago. So I would like to briefly share a few tips. Because when I joined the university, I was a kid from rural Uganda. I had nothing. My nearest member of the family was in the village. Today I stand before you as minister. What has helped me to navigate this journey? First is be a person of values. Define your values in life and irrespective of what happens, stick to your values. Take time and define your values. Number two, be a person of integrity. Integrity means you are whole, you stick and you align. It comes from the word integral or integer, a whole number. A person of integrity and the third quality I advise you to cultivate, these are things which have helped me, is be a person who works hard. Such that everywhere you reach, you turn things around. You make things that have not been to be. A few years ago, none of you ever heard about the Ministry of Science and Technology. You did, you were even wondering what it is. But right now, it's on top. 
Now, I sum up my experience with integrity and hard work this way. Even the most corrupt individuals want a person of integrity to work with. Because they want someone to entrust with their stolen wealth. Even the laziest individuals want a hardworking person to work for them. If you have those two, you'll never lack a job. Be a person of hard work and be a person of integrity. Be a person, number four, be a person of truth. Pursue truth. These days the world is so full of loud noises that you cannot tell which is the truth and which is not. Now truth is truth. Whether you say that gravity moves you upwards, gravity will always move you down. And if you want to find out the truth, test it. Go to the building and jump and we see if you will go up. So there is something called truth. And these days, because of social media, there is a lot of rumor mongering, there is a lot of spreading of falsehood. You cannot build on falsehood. And sometimes the rumors make you miss opportunities. But truth is like a rock. Even when that water has tried to come, the rock will always remain truth. So it makes sure that you always ask, is this true? Is this true? Is what I have heard true? Because it is only truth which builds you and builds your future. With these many words, I want to once again congratulate KIU, congratulate the parents, congratulate uh, before I close, I want to mention something about someone who, to me, has espoused this. Um, and this is Ambassador Nusurati Peru. She's an ambassador. And uh, for me, I have known her at a distance, but last year I, I had an experience, I think actually early this year. I had an experience. I was traveling through Turkey. And um, the flight from Entebbe delayed. So I missed my connecting flight. And I had to spend 24 hours on a Saturday. I called her, I told her, Excellency, I'm here, I'm stuck. I have a team. We have traveled all night. And we, so we'll be spending 36 hours without sleep. That lady got up, she worked extremely hard out of what she can do until she got us visas and got us a hotel so that we can rest. I want to acknowledge you and to thank you for that excellent service. You didn't have to do it. You could have had a lot of excuses. She was actually running, following the officers in their homes in where they have gone, and she was able... That is the excellent service worth of recognition. Ambassador, thank you so much. I mention that because we have graduates. When we talk about integrity, when you talk about hard work, when you talk about people who are able to serve, you need to see some examples. Thank you so much for listening to me. Thank you for inviting me. I'm still, I'm still a, a, a member of staff until somebody gives me end of contract <laughs> so uh, uh, for that matter I'm going to invite myself but uh, David Gonahasa will come here with a team to follow up on the innovations in the university I wish you successful graduation and a very very successful career in life God bless you Thank you very much, our guest of honor, Dr. Monica Musenero Masanza, for those uh, good words to our loved ones and uh, everyone else in attendance. We also thank the Chancellor for his uh, kind words that he gave us earlier, 
our vision bearer, the chairman BOT, Dr. Alhaji Hassan Basajawalaba, who we all think should be promoted to professor, but we are waiting for that opportunity. The chair of the University Council, uh, Honorable Michael Mawanda, and our vice chancellor. Now, in between, we got some other guests who joined us, and they are Dr. Jennifer Tuaze Musoke, member of National Council of Higher Education, Honorable Nyeko Derrick, member of Parliament, Makindia East, Haji Sulait Semakula, Sema Properties Director, and Haji Suleiman Semagula Magula Tua Motors. Can we give another round of applause for all our presenters this morning, the, those who gave us the speeches, the Vice Chancellor, Chairperson of the Council, Chairman BOT, the Chancellor and the Guest of Honor. Can we give them a further round of applause? Now, in uh, the next uh, list of events, we are going to take a health break for about 15 minutes. And as we do that, we'll have some performances from uh, the Basogan Sete group. <laughs> Remember that the Basoga, or we the Basoga, got an inner band recently. So their dancing might be more vigorous than than they would normally do so in the meantime let's take that health break when we come back the vice chancellor will call upon the principals and deans to present grad ones for the award of diplomas and confirmment of degrees so after those 15 minutes we shall move on to that very important item on our agenda today so we have Basoka and Sete coming uh, to perform for us as we take the health break.
you are that was specially dedicated to you with love from the Busoga community in Kampala International University and before we go to the next session we want to recognize the presence of Hajat Azida Basaja Walava the mother to our very own chairman can we give a can round of applause a for Hajat Aisha Azida Basaja Balaba, can we give a round of applause? In her company, is also auntie to Chairman BOT, Hajat Janat Kayemba. Equally, let's give her a, a warm welcome too. Next on uh, our program is the Vice Chancellor is going to call upon the principals and deans to present graduates for award of diplomas and confirmation of degrees. But just before he does that, I would like to introduce my co MC, who is Associate Professor Margaret Carreo, the Assistant Deputy Vice Chancellor of Rice at Kampala International University. Can we give a round of applause? And together with me is Dr. Joel Isavidye, 
the head of department, mass communication. Going forward, we now invite the vice chancellor to call upon principals and deans to present graduates for the award of diplomas and conferment of degrees. I think this is the moment we've been waiting for, and uh, our distinguished professor is here to do just that. And before the vice chancellor does that, to our graduates who are left with seconds to become graduates, Please be patient with us. It's not going to take long. We, want, we don't want to leave this place with an empty tent. You're expected to be quiet. When your name is read, rise up. Okay? And celebrate honorably. Congratulations. Thank you very much, Professor Carreo. Uh, our chief guest, we... Most sincerely thank you for your speech and also the offerings. We'll make a follow-up. You are welcome to Kampala International University. You don't need to invite yourself. You have an open invitation. You are a permanent member of the KIU family. Uh, Mr. Chancellor, sir, and chief guests, allow me, before I invite the deans, to inform this congregation that uh, the 13 countries that are represented among the graduates include Congo, Eritrea, Ethiopia, Kenya, Liberia, Malawi, Nigeria, Rwanda, Sierra Leone, Somalia, South Sudan, Sudan, Tanzania, of course, Uganda, Zambia, and Burundi. And in recognition of all the parents who have who took flights, some came by uh, bus and so on to uh, cross the borders. I want to recognize Mr. Yusuf Hakizimana from Burundi. Please uh, stand on behalf of the parents, plus your dear wife and all the team that you brought. Secondly, usually we have, you are all very highly recognized, you are important. But Mr. Chancellor Sir, allow me to introduce one of our PhDs uh, who is a retired uh, Honorable Justice Dr. Anup Singh. I know we shall introduce you. Uh, Dr. Anup, please uh, stand up for recognition. He's actually a born of Uganda, born in 1949 in Masaka. Clap hand for him, please. He's a retired high court judge in Uganda, a publisher and an author. What a privilege we have at KIU. It's a sign of more trust. And also, I would like to say, they introduced the permanent secretary of the Ministry of Internal Affairs without mentioning his name. He's Lieutenant General Joseph Musanyufu. You are again welcome. Mama Vasaja Baraba, you are most welcome. We always thank God whenever we see you here. Welcome once again. And also, Hajat Aisha Vasaja Baraba, Madam to the Chairman, please stand up so that they can recognize you. We thank you. She has never missed any graduation. And uh, we are grateful that uh, our Chairman is happy like it. Yes. Eh? Well, wow. The graduates are saying that. Okay, uh, Mr. Chancellor, sir, in the name of the Directorate of Higher Degrees and Research, the School of Natural and Applied Sciences, School of Engineering Sciences, School of Mathematics and Computing, the Faculty of Biomedical Sciences, College of Economics and Management, the School of Pharmacy, the School of Nursing Sciences, the College of Humanities and Social Sciences, the Faculty of Clinical Medicine and Dentistry, the School of Law, the College of Education Open and Distance Learning, and by authority of Senate, I have the honor to ask the deans and principals of their respective schools, colleges, and faculties to present the persons whose names will be read and presented to you, Mr. Chancellor, for sufficient cause and who have been found worthy
both in character and in learning, to be conferred upon respective degrees, PhD, Master's and Bachelor's degree, or awarded diplomas, undergraduates or postgraduates, in the various disciplines of Kampala International University. So may I now invite uh, the deans and principals in the order of the booklet and one guidance I have already read the preamble that confers these graduates and therefore you don't need to repeat it and also uh, remember the guidelines of trying to keep time. You are most welcome and I over hand over to the MC to coordinate this process and activity. Thank you. May I also put a footnote that all your academic documents are ready. For those of you who have time, you can pick them and do not panic. If you can't wait, go and celebrate. From Monday, the whole of that week, we shall give them out. For those who have time, please wait for them. Secondly, for the first time, we are also adding for you certified copies of both this degree and the transcript so that at least you can move the highway which was mentioned by the chief guest. Thank you. Thank you very much our very able vice chancellor Professor Mpeza. Now the deans and principals are going to award uh, diplomas and confer degrees. We'll start with the director of the Directorate of Higher Degrees and Research, Professor Israel Obaro, who will read out uh, those students who will attain their degrees uh, in higher degrees, that's masters and above. Professor Obaro, you're most welcome. Thank you very much, sir. Okay. So we're starting with the Bachelor of Philosophy. The first is a PhD in Conflict Resolution and Peace Building and Person of Justice Singh. Justice Singh Charut Anu has PhD in Conflict Resolution and Peace Building. The title of his uh, research was Sikh Genocide in Fourth and the Indian States, an interpretist analyst of the conflicts in Punjab states. The study examined the effect of the Sikh Genocide in Fourth on the Indian states. The study was conducted with an interpretist paradigm with the use of historic research design. The approach was qualitative. The findings showed that the Sikh Genocide in Fourth inspired a desire for self Sorry, for self, okay. Yeah, for self determination in Punjab states, it also affected the economic well in inner states. Furthermore, it led to insecurity in Punjab and India. With the intervention of the foreign organs, it was included that Sikh genocide in 84 affected the Indian states by creating a desire for independence in Punjab, destroying the economic of the region, and causing security of persons and property. The study recommended the intervention of the international community in order to resolve the conflicts. The socio-cultural religious uniqueness of Punjab should also be recognized by the Indian states to avoid conflicts in future. The Chancellor, sir, I have the honor to present to you Justice Singh Chara Anu for the award of PhD in conflict resolution and peace building. By virtue of the powers vested in me, I confer upon the person whose name has been read the respective PhD or Doctor of Philosophy of Kampala International University. Congratulations, sir.
Congratulations, Justice Dr. Singh. The work was supervised by Dr. J. Sabilier and Dr. Mubazi. Congratulations. The next is PhD Management Science Educational Management. So I call on uh, Asimwe Richard. The title of his work was Student Health Behavior and Perception on Course Completion in Universities in Uganda. The study was on the relationship between student health behavior and session of course completion in universities in Uganda. The study was based on the positivism philosophy and health belief model and supported by the theory of reason action. Both quantitative and qualitative research approaches were used to collect data. The finding shows that student health behavior was related to course completion. The study suggested that health facilities in and around institution should be well equipped. Health awareness, especially in sexual transmitted disease, should be sponsored. Digital health services should also be made available for easy access to health services. The work was supervised by Professor Ijama and Maka Blessings and actually Professor Busingi Janis. The Chancellor, sir, it's an honor to present to you Mr. Siwere Richard for the award of PhD in Management Science Educational Management. By virtue of the powers vested in me, I confer upon the person whose name has been read the respective Doctor of Philosophy degree of Kampala International University. Congratulations. Congratulations, Dr. Richard. The next is PhD in Educational Management, Science Educational Management. Tori Olafunke Christiana. Her work was on workforce diversity and academic staff productivity in the private chartered universities in central Uganda. The study investigated the relationship between workforce diversity, academic staff productivity, in private charter universities in Uganda. Similarity, attraction theory, and equity theory guided the study. Data were collected using descriptive and cross-sectional survey design. Qualitative and quantitative approaches were used. The finding revealed that gender diversity has no significant relationship with academic staff productivity. However, there were significant differences in research productivity between male and female academic staff, with male staff being more productive than females. Age diversity significantly affected teaching productivity with academic staff in the middle age being more productive than those in the lower and upper age brackets. Overall workforce diversity had no significant effect on the academic staff productivity. The study recommends that the university management should draft research policies with affirmative action to boost the research productivity of the female staff and rewards for research output. The work was supervised by Dr. Sophia So Gaiti and Dr. Speciosa Asiwe. The Chancellor, sir, it's an honor to present to you Ms. Toriola Funke Christiana for the award of PhD in Management Science Educational Management. By virtue of the powers vested in me, I confer upon the person whose name has been read the respective Doctor of Philosophy degree of Kampala International University. Congratulations. Congratulations, Dr. Christiana. The next is PhD in management science, public management. Ms. Namayongo Lydia. 
The title of her work was on online political participation and electoral democracy in Uganda. Anchored on gratification theory and general system theory, this study investigated how online political participation, e-enabling, e-engaging, and e-empowering can promote electoral democracy in some selected seats in Uganda. Convergent parallel mixed method design and descriptive correlation survey design were utilized. Findings indicate that e-engaging and e-empowering were strongly related to electoral democracy with significant impact. There was also a significant difference in level of electoral democracy by age and specific districts. Providing platforms like fair electoral policies and guidelines to enable people to freely adopt and utilize the internet in action through free social media, free internet and good nationwide network